some of the key hurdles ha happen to do with, um, with transparency and the risk of opening up uh, a can of worms, if you will. Um, so the few successful risk sharing or outcomes-based contracting uh, situations that do exist in the United States and have existed for quite some time and that are publicly available um, have been successful but in part because not all the details have been revealed in terms of what the pay for performance contracts are all about. And I think part of that has to do with intentional lack of transparency on the part of those doing the contracts. They don't really want competition from outside. And, um, and they fear what's going on in Europe, for instance, with risk-based or risk uh, sharing, uh, when all the information is available to all the parties concerned, um, that there'll be not just a lack of proprietary uh, information, but uh, there'll be a, a, la a loss of a competitive gain or a competitive advantage uh, that the industry may have. This said, I do think that in the United States we're going to see more and more pay-for-performance contracts. We see them with providers. We see them at the level of hospitals. So uh, that means that hospitals have to uh, you know, do a better job than they were before in order to get a better reimbursement rate. Um, same thing with providers. So why wouldn't that occur with the pharmaceutical industry? The industry wants to sell its wares. Naturally, it makes profits, that's fine. Um, but in order to do so, it needs to shoulder some of the burdens, some of the risk. And that means that if the product really isn't that good or not good at all compared to what's already available, then why should the payer or the provider or a patient pay for that product? So that's the pay for performance scheme. Now, I don't see that happening on the same scale as it does in Europe but I do see it happening on a smaller scale. So if they're not afraid of risk sharing if they know that ultimately they're probably not going to have to give back much in terms of rebates because their product is showing its worth, it's showing its value. On the other hand, I'm sure there are many companies who would be very reluctant to enter a risk share agreement because they know that their products really won't, won't meet that litmus test. Uh, they won't be better than what's currently available.